Good afternoon. I'd like to thank Sages for this invitation on speaking on this really important topic um, today to you about laparoscopic transistic common bile duct exploration. My one disclosure is that I'm a consultant for Boston Scientific as an educational speaker. The first thing I did was I looked a little bit at um, what our current guidelines are um, through our different journals and societies currently about laparoscopic common bile duct exploration. Surprisingly, the American Society of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy actually doesn't comment on it at all. The European Society of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy states that laparoscopic common bile duct exploration is a safe and effective technique for removal of common bile duct stones. And the BMJ 2017 updated guidelines on common bile duct stones states that laparoscopic common bile duct exploration is an appropriate technique for common bile duct stone removal. Um, it states that there's no evidence um, for difference in efficacy, morbidity, or mortality when compared to perioperative ERCP, and that laparoscopic common bile duct exploration is associated with a shorter hospital length of stay as well as lower costs. So who should get a laparoscopic common bile duct exploration? Um, common bile duct stones have been identified either um, in patients, I'm sorry, with common bile duct stones that have either been identified by preoperative workup, such as MRCP, ultrasound, or other imaging moda modalities, or in, in the operating room with intraoperative imaging with cholangiography or ultrasonography. It can also be considered in patients with altered anatomy that would make a traditional ERCP difficult, such as a Roux-en-Y gastric bypass patient. And then for everybody um, to consider always that about 40 to 50% of patients with cholelithiasis may not have any historical laboratory or radiographic evidence of common bile duct stones preoperatively. And we'll get to that in a second with our IOC. So there's two approaches to this. One is a laparoscopic transcystic common bile duct exploration. This is generally attempted first. Um, it's typically successful when it's indicated and it's less invasive. And then of course, there's a laparoscopic transcholidocal exploration, um, which I think you'll hear about a little bit later today. So one could say, mm, this kind of seems like a hassle. Why should I even bother? Let me just do my lap coli and be done with it. Well, one, I would say that any patient undergoing a laparoscopic cholecystectomy is suspect. Remember that common bile duct stones are present in 10 to 15% uh, of patients. And then also remember in the previous slide, we stated that about 40 to 50% of patients with common uh, bile duct stones or cholelithiasis don't have any symptoms, um, or nor do they have any laboratory or radiographic evidence of them. Also, single-stage laparoscopic management of, of gallstones and common bile duct stones have um, been shown to have an equivalent extraction rate to pre- and post-op ERCP. Um, they have a similar morbidity and mortality rate to ERCP. Um, it does have a shorter hospital length of stay. Um, it requires fewer interventions and really one anesthetic. And of course, it has a lower cost overall. So I'm going to stand on my soapbox here for a minute um, and talk about intraoperative cholangiogram. This is really a fundamental requirement of laparoscopic common bile duct exploration. And one really has to become a routine user of IOC. IOC helps um, verify bile duct anatomy. It helps diagnose cholelithiasis, especially when your symptoms, labs, or imaging um, are um, unreliable. And it really becomes a very good practice for everyone in the operating room, not only the surgeon, but also the staff and the residents um, and the, um, the um, fluoro techs. And so um, doing this routinely just makes it um, a very smooth and easy process. So who's qualified for this? Really, almost any general surgeon can do this. You don't really need any um, extra training above and beyond what you've done. If you know how to do endoscopy um, and you use a Selvinger technique, then you can learn how to do a laparoscopic transcystic common bile duct exploration. In fact, um, in 2017, um, SAGE's official publication on this stated that transcystic laparoscopic common bile duct exploration is a safe procedure that should be within the realm of most general surgeons who perform cholecystectomy on a regular basis. 
When we look specifically what basics you need to know, you have to have a knowledge of the biliary anatomy. You have to be able to perform and interpret intraoperative clangiogram. You have to have an understanding of the different approaches to the common bile duct exploration. And you have to um, have an understanding of the utilization of different techniques of stone extraction, either being flushing, balloon extraction, uh, basket extraction, and colidoscopy. And then, you know, once you have this knowledge, 90, there's a 90% success rate in surgeons who perform laparoscopic common bile duct explorations routinely. Um, for you to do a transistic exploration, though, you really have to pick the right patient. That's the most important um, uh, uh, part of this and really to know what your limitations are with the transistic approach. So um, first, you can have either one stone or multiple stones. Um, your stones, though, have to be less than six millimeters in size. Um, you can't have any intrapatic stones, of course. Your cystic duct has to be um, greater than four millimeters. Your common bile duct can be big or small, um, but the common bile duct entrance has to be lateral. Those that are posterior or distal really make it challenging to do a transistic approach. You can have cholecystitis or not. Um, and as a surgeon, um, as long as you're not doing a transcholidocal technique, um, you really don't have to be the most amazing uh, um, laparoscopic suturing. So this is an algorithm that I put together for the laparoscopic management of common bile duct exploration. And I know it's a really busy slide, um, but really it kind of goes through um, all the steps and possibilities after you start your routine clangiogram. So if you do your clangiogram and it's negative, then that's great. You can just proceed with your laparoscopic cholecystectomy as you would always do. If you do your routine clangiogram and it's positive, and it looks like there's some very small stones in there, maybe less than four millimeters and, and or ideally less than two millimeters, then you can attempt to flush these stones. Um, and you can do a good flush and then repeat your clangiogram. Um, once you repeat your clangiogram, if it's negative, then that's great. You can proceed to your lap coli. But if it's positive, um, and you have one or many stones, as long as your cystic duct is greater than four millimeters, and that's when you would proceed with a transistic common bile duct exploration. Again, for a transistic um, approach, um, the indications are a stone um, location that's distal to the cystic duct common bile duct junction. Your cystic duct diameter has to be greater than four millimeters, um, and you can achieve this with dilation. Um, less than three to six stones, ideally. Um, your stones have to be less than six millimeters in size, and the cystic duct entrance into the common bile duct has to be straight and lateral. The contraindications for this procedure are stone diameters greater than six millimeters. If the cystic duct is less than four millimeters despite um, dilation, if you have intrahepatic stones, or the cystic duct entrance as posterior or distal um, to the common bile duct stones. Again, you do your routine cholangiogram, it's positive, you have a cystic duct that's appropriate size, your stones aren't too big, and then you move on to your transistic approach. The first thing you're going to do is a dilation, then you're going to do your cholidocoscopy and decide what's best, flushing, basket, Fogarty balloon. Um, once it's successful, you complete your clangiogram to ensure that all the stones have been cleared. Um, if they haven't, you proceed, and if it ultimately fails, which it's unlikely to, then you go on to post-op ERCP after you remove the gallbladder. And if your clangiogram is negative, then you're done and you take out the gallbladder. Um, so this is the equipment that I use currently for a transistic approach. Um, for my IOC, um, I use Omnipaik and I dilute this because remember when you dilute it, it actually allows for better con um, for better visualization because the stones can hide behind a really um, concentrated um, column of contrast. A normal, um, normal saline and a 20 cc syringe, um, some IV extension tubing, um, I use a Cook Clangiogram 5 French catheter system. And then for the transistic common bile duct exploration, um, I use a Cook common duct exploration set, a flexible cholidocoscopy, um, a liter normal saline pressure bag with some IV tubing, and then I use the Cook Clangiogram kit that kind of has all the parts and pieces um, that I need to be able to do this. So first you start with your laparoscopic cholecystectomy with IOC. You of course dissect out the cystic duct um, and you um, 
have your critical view of safety. Um, once you've identified the anatomy appropriately, you make your ductotomy in the cystic duct. Um, you wanna then milk out any sludge or stones through that ductotomy with like a Maryland or another instrument that you're comfortable with. Um, and then you place your five French clangiogram catheter um, through your ductotomy and you performed your clangiogram. If you do your clangiogram and um, it doesn't light up the, um, the left and right duct and your common duct and drain into the duodenum and you have a concern, um, then you really wanna flush um, the duct with some saline um, to see if there are some small stones that are causing an obstruction or some sludge um, that you can clear. Um, and I would also recommend giving some glucagon at this time, um, one to two milligrams um, IV. Um, and this can be given by our, our anesthesiologist to help relax that sphincter of OD. So let's say you do all that. And um, once you do the clangiogram, this is the finding. You have a bunch of um, stones in the common bile duct. It looks like here, maybe four or five. Um, and at this point, you decide that you're gonna proceed with your transcystic exploration. Um, the cholidocoscopy um, with stone retrieval techniques under direct visualization really allows for the greatest sense of safety and accuracy when you do these. And this is an example of the equipment um, that we have at our hospital. Um, but I know that many places, including us, um, have been able to <clears throat> acquire the um, Boston Scientific um, spyglass uh, technology that has a disposable um, cholidocoscope. Um, so, but either one is, um, is perfectly fine. So um, this is how I do the transcystic um, approach, and this is kind of my step-by-step -step, uh, in achieving this. You um, start by passing a flexible 0 0.03 uh, five-inch guide wire through the clangiogram catheter. Um, you then remove the catheter, leaving the guide wire in place. Um, I insert this 20 French flexible sheath um, uh, through the abdominal wall, um, so you can safely pass your cholidocoscope through this. And that's that sheath. And then I place the balloon dilator over that guide wire into the cystic duct um, for the dilation. Dilate the cystic duct with a four French uh, balloon dilator. And of note, you know, your cystic duct has to be at least two and a half millimeters to start with, just so you um, make sure that you don't, you know, um, rupture it. Uh, and then after that dilation is done, I remove the balloon and I leave the guide wire in place, much like any other Selvinger technique. After that, I place the um, cholidocoscope um, through that sheath over the guide wire and into the cystic duct and then advance it to the common bile duct. I do this with the help of some padded graspers and then of course, continuous saline irrigation as you're doing that advancement. Once I'm in the common bile duct at that time, I remove the guide wire. Um, once I'm in the common bile duct, um, then I go looking um, for those common bile duct stones. Once I've identified the stones, I pass the stone basket through the cholidocoscope working channel, um, pass the stone. And then of course I open the basket, um, try to snare um, those stones, close the basket, and then we remove the cholidocoscope and the basket with the stone within it as one unit. Um, and then you repeat this process repeatedly until you've cleared all the stones. And then just remember, I've highlighted this in red here, that every time you, of course, place your cholidocoscope, you have to do the whole process over again in terms of placing um, your wire and then subsequently your cholidocoscope to do this um, under direct visualization to make it as safe as possible. To go back again really quickly, I forgot to mention that um, basket retrieval is the um, most common and most preferred technique um, uh, during a transistic approach, um, other than flushing, of course. But if for some reason this is not successful or you choose um, to use a Fogarty balloon, you can do that. I would recommend a four French Fogarty balloon. Um, you wanna pass um, this Fogarty catheter um, into the cystic duct and then cut the common bile duct alongside the scope because the working channel is too small um, for the Fogarty. Um, you advance the catheter beyond the stone under direct visualization, you inflate the balloon, you withdraw the catheter enough to impact the stone against the scope, and then you remove the whole ensemble um, at once, much like you do with a basket and the scope. And then of course you can repeat this process. 
once you're done, um, it is really, really important and critical that you perform a post-intervention cholangiogram. You want to demonstrate that you know, you've identified the left and right hepatic ducts, a common bile duct with drainage into the duodenum uh, without any evidence of common bile duct stones, and, and this is critical. When you're done with this, of course, you remove all your apparatus. Um, at this point, the cystic duct often tends to be pretty dilated. Um, and so sometimes it's necessary to use an endo loop um, to secure that cystic duct close if you feel like your um, clips are going to be too small. Um, and that's kind of an overview of how I perform a transcystic um, laparoscopic common bile duct exploration. I do want to say there's a lot of resources out there if you're learning this um, or want to kind of perfect your technique um, or use um, some um, of these resources to help teach your residents or other trainees. Um, there's a very nice review. Um, it's a clinical spotlight review um, of laparoscopic common bile duct exploration that's done by SAGES. That was published in 2017, and you can find this on the SAGES website. You can also go to SAGES TV and look for um, some how-to videos, um, and um, there are some, some great videos out there and presentations on people that have done this um, to learn some tips and tricks. Thank you so much for this opportunity to present um, to you today on laparoscopic transistic common bile duct exploration. I hope everybody has a great SAGES meeting.